the no code tutorial and in today's tutorial we're going to show you how to prepare your bubble app um, or part of your bubble app for the release and wrapping into a mobile native app so in previous tutorials we showed you how to convert your bubble app using into a um, progressive web app using our plugin um, and in some cases let's say um, you really want to use um, push notifications on iOS. You really want to have your app published in the App Store or Play Store. In this case, um, it is necessary to completely wrap your app into a mobile native application where you will then be able to publish it to the App Store, Google Play Store, and so on and so forth. And in this tutorial, we're not going to show you the actual conversion. We're going to give you tips and tricks on how to prepare um, your bubble application for the actual conversion and then also tell you a few options there currently are how to convert your bubble app. So what I'm doing here now is um, just as a demo for you, I have this bubble application, which is for us just the uh, application that demos our plugins. But what I want to show you is that is, let's assume this is your application and you have different pages, a profile, a settings page, whatever it is. Um, the first thing you have to really um, yeah, think about is that when you build an app, you you probably want to build it on the same app here. Or sorry, let me rephrase. If you want to build a mobile native app, okay, instead of just taking your whole application and wrapping it into a, a native app, that won't work for multiple reasons because you don't want to have page change in a native app. It won't be perfectly uh, optimized visually for a native app and probably Apple won't accept it too. What you want to do is you want to actually create a new page where you will rebuild your actual functionality but in an app, mobile app design, okay? And this is what we're going to show you today, the things to keep in mind, the things to um, look out for and just how to prepare. So again, let's assume this is our application. We have different pages here and we're going to create a new page and this page will just be the page where our app will be displayed, our mobile app. And this will be the actual page which will be later wrapped within a mobile application and will be seen by users of our mobile app. So I'm just going to call this page test app. It really doesn't matter what you call it. Um, and the page is going to be created. And the first thing you want to have start with is or just keep in mind is you don't want to have any page changes okay whereas in a normal um, web app or your website you maybe have a home page and then someone clicks on a button for a listing he will brought to the listings page and so on and so forth this is the normal way how to do it also has um, obviously big seo and search engine advantages uh, compared to just having one single page um, in a mobile app that doesn't really work um, and it would also be too slow because um, this, despite how fast you, you build everything, there still will be this loading time. If you click on a button, you change URL, the new URL has to be loaded. And again, that just takes time. And in a mobile app, things should be instant. Otherwise, the, the user experience will be really bad. And again, the uh, Apple and Google won't maybe um, accept your, your um, listing. So how are you going to achieve that? Well, you're going to achieve that by building basically the whole application within this one page. Okay. So the first thing you want to head off is you already have this button here or this checkbox. When you click on the page, this page is a native app. Okay. So let's just click that. And we're getting this, um, this pop-up here and bubble already gives us quite a few good tips. So you should keep a few things in mind when you're building a native app, you should change the page width to something like this here. You shouldn't change pages in the app instead use groups. That's what I just told you. Um, and we're going to take a look at that as well, but, this is the, the most important one. We're going to take care of this too. Um, and yeah, so let's click got it. Okay. And let's start with the page width and height. So let's, let's check again what bubble told us. Bubble told us 640 by 320. And we're going to do exactly that. So 320 will be the width and the height will be 640. So you're probably asking yourself now, uh, why so narrow? Let's actually not make that fixed width. Quite simple, it's much easier to build a small UI and then allow it to responsively expand, whereas building a big UI, or it's not big, but a wide UI, and then kind of cramming that together, there will be much more work. Design your app here as if this would be your phone in front of you, okay, with all the elements in a really small, and that's actually quite narrow, a really narrow width. And then obviously for bigger phones, this will just easily expand, no issues at all, okay? so. This is the first part done. Now the next part, how to change pages, display different content. We're gonna do that using groups, okay? And the structure you wanna have there is you just wanna have always a group and this group should take 
basically fill out this whole uh, screen here, okay? And except maybe leave a small um, space here at the bottom for the, the app bar, the tab bar. And these groups here will be not visible on page. It will be important to name them. So let's, for example, call that login. And this will then be shown on a conditional statement. What will be the conditional statement? Well, let's create that now. Let's create an actual group for our um, tab bar, okay? So let's place that here. So let's call that menu, okay? And let's give that a bit different color, okay? And let's give that a state. You can add a state by going to this information, add a new custom state, and uh, we can call that current menu, whatever. State type is just text, okay? And we can say, all right, so the default value of this should be home, okay? So we're on default or login. Let's, let's keep it at login. Or home is better, actually, okay? Um, so what you want to do next, okay, you want to say, all right, so this year, let's actually rename that to home. This is not visible on page load, but it is visible when our menu groups, current menu value is home. And that's basically all you have to do. Now you can go ahead here to elements tree, always hide the groups you want to work on. We can just copy this group here, hide it again, paste it. Now we have home copy, place that correctly. This one we're gonna call, I don't know, profile. And this will be visible when your um, current menu item is profile, okay? So now the question is, how do we change the current menu uh, uh, yeah, states? Well, quite simply, you just add icons. Uh, I would recommend not using the standard icon here, but going ahead to plugins and maybe adding um, material icons or ionic icons. They just look more, yeah, um, native basically. So let's search for that. Um, well, so you could use material icons. Again, I prefer ionic, uh, ionic elements here built, built specifically for mobile experience in native apps. Okay. And now let's go ahead and maybe add the icon here, the ionic icon. Uh, I'm not going to make it pretty now. We're just going to have a home icon here and we're going to have a profile icon. Okay. So let's call that profile or just user person. Yep. All right. And now quite simple. We're going to say, all right, when this is pressed, we want to go ahead and change the state or set the state of our menu, current menus item to home. Really simple. Same thing for the other icon, uh, start at a workflow. We want to set the state on click of menu to profile. And one last thing I want to do to make maybe enhance the, the UI a bit, I just want to add a conditional. I want to say, all right, so when menus, uh, current menu is home, which is this one, uh, I just want to have a different icon color to show the user that, um, yeah, that's the active menu. Okay, I'm just going to copy this expression, paste that here and say same thing here for profile and the icon color will be the same red as well. So great, really, really simple. Um, we can go ahead and test that already. So let's just add for home here. Let's add a um, hello like this. Okay, maybe center that, whatever. And on the profile, um, let's just have here, I don't know, welcome back user. Okay. All right, so let's quickly preview that. Um, nothing too special, but should work fine. So our default menu should be home, which should display here, whatever it is, hello, let's check that. Um, okay, um, doesn't quite work because it's not um, uh, responsive. Um, so let's check that. And also the home is not displayed. So let's check these two errors. So first of all, I know both solutions already. So for home, we forgot to add the actual um, conditional. So we didn't say what should happen when the menu is home. Well, this element should be visible, of course. Uh, and same thing here, profile, this element should be visible, okay? Second thing, let's do it, make it responsive. Um, we're gonna do that by, let's actually menu and not make this fixed width. Let's try that, all right. Maybe wrap these two in a group. That would work, center that group, um, apply a maximum width and let's check that. Yep, that looks fine. Obviously on a computer that doesn't look perfect now, imagine it would be like this, okay? Uh, I just want to show you the functionality, but again, this would be the way it looks in your um, in your actual native app. Okay, so let's try that now. Okay, that's our home state. That's our welcome back uh, or our profile state. So as you can see, the change is immediate, um, which is standard um, in, a, in a native app and users are um, used to that. And that's just the way it is. If there would be like a loading time, clicking the profile, changing page, that would not be good UI, UX, um, and that's just what, what, you're not, what you can't do uh, as of now. 
All right, so another thing I want to show you is with this plugin that we used, um, according to Bubble's recommendation as well, you have things like a toggle, okay? And you might recognize this from iOS, a uh, very native feel, and you can um, allow users to make changes using these toggles. You can ch uh, choose the color, and it just looks and feels uh, quite native. Um, and this is what Bubble said, you want to use these kinds of things to give your app a native feel and to, uh, to increase the chances of um, Apple and Google um, accepting your app because that's not um, always the case. Um, what I'm showing you is basically just maximizing the chances of your app being accepted and obviously increasing the user experience to a maximum because um, if you just submit your current application wrapped um, as a native app, um, I, I'm quite certain I can ensure that your app won't be accepted by the Play Store and um, Apple App Store. So yeah, that's basically it, to be honest. Um, really quick tutorial, just showing you the key features of how to get started. Um, now the question obviously is how do I then take this application and convert it to an app? And I would say as of now, I would give you three recommendations. So recommendation number one, which is basically for free more or less, is doing it yourself. How would you do that? Well, you would have to install the relevant um, programs for Apple it would be X, Xcode and for um, Android I think it would be um, the Google Android Studio I think it's called and um, what you would do is you would create a screen um, and just basically wrap the URL of your app in this case if we preview that again you would just take let's check that here you would take this URL obviously without the version test and this here and you would wrap this URL into a web view okay um, obviously that's a bit more yeah, advanced and if you want to have some advanced features like push notifications, you'll have to build that in yourself. That's what we're doing um, for most of our apps. But if you want to save some time, uh, but obviously have to spend some money, you could use something like WebView Gold. Um, we have made quite good experience with them. That's not, we're not in any way affiliated with them. That's just the honest recommendation. You could use something like BDK Native um, uh, by a bubble, fellow bubble user, which we also used a few times, also quite good. So there's a few different um, options. Uh, I would recommend to check out the bubble forum. There's a lot of different options uh, shown there. Some have advantages, disadvantages, obviously it's always a price question. And um, if you want to do it yourself or have someone else do it. But um, that's basically um, the way to wrap that. And then you will get a build and you will be able to submit that to the App Store and the Play Store. One small thing that I want to um, just give you as an, yeah, uh, as a tip from my side, if you have this <clears throat> and then you will publish your application, what I don't like for my applications is that users on desktop PCs or desktop uh, or yeah, just computers will be able to access the app version. I think um, I think I want to I, I want to basically stop that from happening. So how am I doing this? What I always do, I add a workflow. I want to say, okay, do when condition is true. I want to redirect the user to any other page, let's say index, when get data from page URL, let's call it ID, is not, and then you enter some sort of pin, uh, password, whatever you want to do, you can just do anything random character. So what does this do? This ensures that you know the exact ID that has to be entered, otherwise there will be an automatic redirect, okay? So let's preview that. This is just a normal page now, I'm going to show you, and there's an automatic redirect. Okay, as you can see, users on a PC won't be able to access that. So let's try that again. This time I'm gonna copy this URL and let me just add the ID here. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna say, all right, ID equals, and let's copy this thing we created here. Okay, and as you can see, now it works. There's no redirect because we entered the correct ID. So what does this do? Again, just to summarize, this allows you to take this exact URL and wrap that with whatever service you're, you're choosing to wrap your app with, ensuring that basically only users that really install your app from the App and Play Store, um, App Store and Play Store have access to this mobile view, mobile version of your app. Um, obviously, users could guess and find out your password, but I, I think if you use something like this, it's quite unlikely. Um, but yeah, it's just for me, some kind of security. Uh, measure to prevent web users from accessing the mobile apps page because at the end of the day this is just a, a page as any other that we built in bubble which we're then wrapping um, and I want to kind of protect or not protect but not allow web users to access this mobile view so yeah this is um, this is it regarding this video um, hope you learned something and got some useful tips on converting your bubble application as of always if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us via email 
uh, via nokohq.com or um, just comment down here on uh, YouTube. Thank you for watching and see you guys for the next tutorial of NokoHQ. Bye.